The advantage of growing dahlias is that they will keep flowering and flowering. The more you cut off, the more flower you'll get. And they can extend their season right up until the first frost. And that's the time to start thinking about lifting the tuber, as they're called. First frost, it will blacken the leaves. People panic. Don't worry, it hasn't got down that far. When you do lift them, the first thing you do is to cut all the branches, stems, right back. Having cut them all back, you then wash the entire tuber. All the dirt, wherever it is, you get every bit of it out. Check that none of these are damaged. If they have been, you might have spiked one digging up, then remove it. The next thing to do is to get a suitable container. This will do fine. And just place it upside down in the container. Another one there, maybe another two there. The important thing is to put them in a frost-free situation. So a garage, a shed, don't put them in heat and just leave them. If we are going to get an exceptional bad frosty period, then just fleece over the top as a double insurance. Check them regularly, none of these have started to rot off, just leave it. In February is the time to go out and bring them in. So, with a container like this, a bit of multi-purpose, and cover the thing right up, right up to the base of the stem. That will ensure that the shoots start to appear. But that's all you have to do. Bring them in, February, March, not a, a lot of heat, but just enough to start to warm the plant up to start producing the shoots. There is a school of thought that says you can leave them in through the winter in the ground. Unfortunately, over the years, we had some particularly sharp frost, and I always say it's better to be safe than sorry. So my recommendation to anybody is to lift them in the autumn and carry out the procedure I've just told you about. This is an established tuber, um, has been in the ground probably for several years, and it's produced this very fat bulbous tuber now. What you need to do is, before you do anything else, is to check for things like this. Now these are growing off mother plant of no use at all. With secateurs or knife, just remove it. Equally, check the entire tuber for any damaged or split tubers and remove. There's a classic example. That is just hanging off there, cut it off. You can always take a chance and put it in the ground. Having done all of that, you then want to inspect it very closely to see where the eyes are. Having located where they are, and you can see one, two, three, there's probably others coming up, you then, with a Stanley knife, a very sharp, knife or a razor blade cut in to <coughs> that tuber there. It's a, a very delicate job but it's going to be worth it in the end. Eventually you will finish up with that eye and that tuber. Having achieved that you can then put them in a box like this with some compost and then you've got maybe three, four extra dahlias out of the mother dahlia. If you're going to try growing dahlias for the first time, this is what you should do. You go down to the garden centre and you will select packets with the tubers in them. There is a variety of different colours, sizes, and depending on what purpose you have for them, whether you want a short variety, tall variety, whatever, all the instructions are in there. However, if you wait till around about May, you can buy already rooted cuttings of them. But I think this is a lot more fun because you've really done it yourself. Get them home, 
first of all remove the uh, label, that's pretty obvious, and then take them out of the container they're in. Obviously they will have dried out somewhat and they'll sweat left in that plastic bag. And this is the typical sort of thing you're going to find. First of all, you can see traces of one or two that uh, are not going to make it. Just remove them with a pair of seconders. Seems a shame having purchased it, you've got to take bits off, but believe you me, it's worth it. The rest of it is fine. You can actually see a shoot starting to appear in there. So that's a good sign. These you can plant straight in the open ground, but I wouldn't be doing that until around about um, middle to the end of May. So how are you going to keep them in the meantime? In a box or something like that, having removed the bits that shouldn't be there, just give them a fine spray over of water. You could actually use um, a mixture of water and maxi crop, the seaweed feed. That will just encourage them to make the growth a bit quicker. Put them in sunlight, but not intense sun, so you've got an area in the conservatory or whatever, you could put them there. So you would do that to all three that you've got. There's another one. And again, showing a little bit of sign of wear and tear. They've probably been in that packet for some time. People pick them up, put them down. We're all guilty of it. So having got the thing cleaned, checked and everything else, the next thing will be is to plant them in the garden. This um, particular variety tells you that it's uh, about 40 inches high. Now obviously that's not too tall a variety. Great to clump them. Don't just plant them one here, one there. And there you can do if you want to. But that sort of compact effect gives a real statement. Um, this particular one, burlesque. But there's many, many different varieties. This is a variety called burlesque, grows to about 40 inches high and the ideal situation for it is in a group. All the leading uh, garden designers will tell you that group planting is better than individuals, but in this case they're absolutely right. The first thing you need to do is make sure that the ground is moist, um, water it if you had to overnight, so you've got a moist situation. Preparing the hole I would, to encourage the growth on the tube, is add some multi-purpose like that in the bottom. The general rule is that you need to plant them at least 24 inches between each one and about 6 inches deep. So rather than mess around with the rule, if you remember our garden trowel is a foot long and from there to there is 6 inches. So I think you can work out what to do. Having got the ground ready, prepared, and as I say, it's nice and moist, looks in good nick. And then, I reckon we've gone down deep enough. Then just placing and spreading the tubers as you place them into the hole you've just prepared. Cover it all over like this. One of the things that you essentially need to do is put a cane in to say where you planted them because there won't be any movement for a little while and so often is the case you forget dig it up and it's wasted all the original effort you put in so having marked it in the middle there that's it and then just enjoy if we hit a very dry spell then keep them watered they are greedy feeders and they do need to supply moisture to all their tubers as the plant grows something like tomato feed just every 10 days to give them uh, an extra encouragement. If on the other hand you're planting taller varieties to go in between plants in a border or down at the allotment to surprise the wife and take home a bunch of flowers for her then you need to have a slightly different system and that will include staking. So when you plant them in this stage you would also stake at the same time. That saves any damage to the tuber when they start to develop and make sure you can then uh, uh, tie them up to stop them blowing over. But as I say, a short variety like this, there is no need to stake. 
regularly feed, whether they be in the allotment or individually in the garden or a group like this. And then just enjoy the wonderful flush of colour you're going to have all summer.